because I think the rest of the family. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to our master. Glory to our king. Glory to our Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. We thank God for this one today. We thank God for this one continuous day of high glory. The day the Lord God Almighty had made for we all to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, welcome, everyone. We apologize for uh, any inconveniences. We're trying to adjust the devices. Welcome everyone, welcome men and women of God, welcome brothers and sisters in Christ. We greet you all in the wonderful name of our Master Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome to our, our Sunday online worship ministration service. And we are still in, on our day uh, 35 of our fasting and prayer. Uh, it's the day the Lord God Almighty has given unto us. We are grateful to God Almighty. We are thankful to God uh, for, for giving us uh, the honor of this day. Uh, ready. It is a privilege and an honor to serve God Almighty, uh, to say yes and amen to his holy name, to say yes and amen to, to, his, uh, uh, to his word. Yes, it is a wonderful privilege and honor. So we are saying uh, Ebenezer to his holy name. Uh, to everyone who is watching, streaming uh, via uh, TikTok, uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, you are greeted. Uh, we love you dearly. Uh, may the Lord God Almighty continue to bless you all the more. Uh, may your life continue to be lifted up. Uh, may your life continue to receive the glorious riches. It is an unfailing love of God. So we pray that that love continue to radiate within you. You continue to be divine partaker of that love, the nature of the love of God. Uh, what God has done for you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should or will not perish, but have an everlasting life. So the life that God has planned for you, we pray that that life become yours permanently. You will continue to dwell in that life. You will continue to be filled in that life. You will continue to be bearer of that life. Nothing will hinder you. Nothing shall snatch you out from the presence of the Father. Nothing shall enter the plan that God has for you. Listen, God said, I have thought and plans for your life to prosper you and not to harm you. So we are praying and declaring that as you enter each blessed day that the Lord God Almighty has given unto you, the plan of God for your life to prosper you and not to harm you, nothing shall separate you from that plan. Nothing shall hinder that plan from not manifesting in your life. The plan of God will surely manifest upon your life. He said, surely, Surely, it means it means it means certainty. He said, "Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. All the days of your life, goodness shall follow you. All the days of your life, mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life, favor shall follow you. All the days of your blessed life, love shall follow you. All the days of your life, the wonders, the awesome wonders of the Lord shall continue to follow you." So this prayer remain upon your life. Welcome if you are just tuning in right now. I remain Apostle Kenneth Sidio, priest of Rabbanite International Ministries, the son of Prophet Sekodade. And we are grateful to God for this wonderful privilege and honor uh, to be furthered by him. Uh, happy one continuous Women's Day to all the women of the uh, Republic of South Africa. We are saying happy, happy Women's Day to you all. Uh, we, we thank God for your lives. We thank God for those women who stood up on the, on the faithful day of August 9th so many years ago. Uh, many of them who stood on, on what they believe and they uh, regardless of what um what was in front of them they never yielded to the fear they never come they never conformed to the fear they stood on their ground and the truth prevailed so we are saying that uh, um such women um women, women of matter we are praying for all those kind of women and we know that um, god continue to give grace to all the rest of women from all over the world uh may you be blessed all the more uh, yes, this is it. Before we uh, pray, before we go into the service, I'd like to uh, acknowledge all the men and women of God that always pray for us. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for carrying us in your heart. Uh, thank you for always um, uh, having opening the doors of your heart for us to come in. Uh, thank you for always praying for us in the spirit. Uh, thank you for strengthening us as we strengthen you. Uh, and we know that... Um, each time we uh we come together in the beauty of in the beauty of his holiness, 
and we did not come by our own might, neither would not, neither do we come by our own ability. We did not come by our own power. We did not come by our own knowledge. Uh, we come in his, in his presence. As we are knowing that the Lord God Almighty in his presence, we shall be lifted up together. We know that uh, uh, there's, there's a feeling that we all are going to be receiving together. We know there's a blessing that God had already done, planned, a portion for us, for us to be partakers of it. Hence, we are divine partakers. So we are partaking from the fullness of God. Now, as we are partaking from the fullness of God, we are also meant to share what we have received. We are also meant to share what we receive. Now, what we receive from the Father, what we receive from God Almighty, it is not us, it is not unto us for us to keep. It is given to us. It is blessed unto us for we to share it. It becomes more when we share. Meaning, the more we share it, the more it becomes, the more it grows. One grow in the value of God once you learn to share the things of God. One grows in the wisdom of God once you learn to share the wisdom of God. One grows in the knowledge of God once you learn to share that knowledge. Because the key thing of knowledge is this. When someone has God's knowledge, such a person has received freedom. Freedom. See, having the knowledge of God makes one to be free from evil works, from evil desires, from evil conspiration. Listen, before ever anything will, will happen to you, before ever anything will, will come on your way, before ever anything can be used against you, God already gave you wisdom on how to speak, on how to do, on how to react, on how to act, on how to stay. You see, when you have such knowledge, you will not be shaken. When the foundation of your existence will not be conformed to the fear of what is to happen. Meaning, you, you heard that there have been a massive retrenchment and your name happens to be in the list of those who will be retrenched and you heard this through rumor, through gossip. But you know for a truth that you are you are not defined by rumor, whether you are defined by gossip. So you did not yield to whatsoever that you heard from them because you know that the report for your life, it is not rumor, it is not gossip. The report for your life is, I have thought, I have plans for your life to prosper you and not to harm you. So you are holding on to what God says, not what anyone rumored concerning you, not what anyone gossip concerning you. You know what God has for you. You know what God has intended for you. So you work with God's purpose. Because you are to work in his purpose because you carry his temple. You carry his temple. You are that temple. You are that temple. Do you not understand? The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, say, our body is the temple of Holy Spirit, the temple of God. What kind of a house will you build for me? The house that has come to stay, the house that is not built with human hands. If your house is built on rumor and gossip, the foundation of that house will be shaking when trouble comes. If your house is built on what people are saying and you are concerning yourself about that, it means when, there, when trouble arises, the foundation of your home will not only be shaken, but it will be, uh, it will be erupted out. Because why? You've yielded to the fear. You've yielded to the rumor. So you've considered to the worries and the rumor. So the foundation of your house is built on that rumor. And Christ does not dwell in such foundation. The presence of the Lord does not dwell in such foundation. For the foundation of Christ to come upon a person, the thing that the word of God will do is to first of all uproot what is not from God. What is not in right standing with God? What does not please God Almighty? God uproots that nature. God uproots you out from that. God separates you from that. God separates you from those thoughts. God separates your spirit from such things. So whatever your spirit might have been attached to, whatever fear that might have ruled your mind, whatever fear that has engulfed your personality, whatever fear that has way of piercing through your mind, constantly interfering, you are the one who always want to do things, but the fear that comes to you makes you to abandon it. You are the one that always determine, you determine, and you have strong determination that you want to go about this. The moment fear of failure comes to you, comes to you, you forsake that determination. You begin now to you begin now to seek people's opinion. You begin now to run after after people or after things. And the the, the thing is. Where you are going and where you are running, who you are running after, such person or such people does not even carry the grace that you carry. Now you are forsaking their grace. 
The book of Titus chapter 2, verse 11, we say, grace has appeared before all men. So grace appears before you. Hence, you have that determination. Hence, you have that wisdom. Hence, you have that knowledge. And run with, run with it. Run with it because when something has been placed into your heart, when something has arise, awoken in your spirit, it is the strength of the Lord that brought it and you are expected to run with it. How you will go about it is believing that God who has given this vision to you, he will see you through. Philippians 2 says, it has been God all the while. It has been God all the while who effectually at work within you. So the vision, who is vision? Christ. Who is vision? Christ is the vision. So Christ in you remains the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 26-27. It says, Christ in you. It's the hope of rich in glory. So a vision was placed on you. Yes, again, you are seeking human opinion. You are the one who, who the vision I came to. You are the one who received the vision. You are the one who the vision was given to. You are the one who received the dream. But you take what is from God and what God has given to you. You run it from people's opinion, from men's opinion. Apostle Paul says, in the same book of Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things. He did not need the help of the Philippians. He did not need the help of his brothers. He did not need the help of his neighbors. He says, I can do all things. Now, how was he able to do all things? He said, through Christ Jesus, meaning the Christ that appeared before him, the vision that appeared before him, it also came with strength. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Having not understand, when you receive that vision, you are filled with joy. That joy is the strength that you need to run with that vision, without holding back, without disbelieving. So whatever you go, you already own such places. Whatever you find your feet, your feet already stamp the authority. Because the authority is in you. The authority is in you. It's an authority that the Father graciously gave unto you. So that you can reign as a king on this earth. Many people say they want to depart this earth because they are tired of this earth. Many people keep saying uh, they, they are not fit in this country. They are not fit in where they are. Listen, you are divinely, structurally placed where you are by God Almighty. Never, never disregard where you are coming from. Never disregard your own bringing. God has planned for you. If God can place his only begotten son to go through difficulties. Do you know the challenges that Jesus faced from birth? From birth, Jesus I was challenged in every manner, in every way. From birth, the mother and the father had no rest. They had to move from city to city. They had to move from town to town. Because of the world, they are trying to protect the safety of the life of Jesus, who is the king. Who is the king? God made him so. God made his life to express danger. In all the dangers, none of those dangers touched him. But dangers was ar arising from, from him. Dangers was ar it arose from all corners of where he was. The, at the, at the, at, as from his bed, his life faced danger from, from bed. The moment he was betted, three wise men emanated from the east. And they warned the parents, they warned the father, they warned the mother, please make sure you hit this king. Hit the king. Hit him. Hit him. Where have you heard that king must be hidden? Say, hide the king. Why? Because Herod is seeking after his life. And when Herod discovered that he's been played by the three wise men, he now gave an order to kill every first male born, every child that was born from the age of Jesus up until, up until four years old, to make sure that they are all dead. Wasn't that evil wicked? Psalm 91 says, it will give charge over your life. It, says, it will give charge over your life. Trust in the Father. Trust in the things of God. The presence of God, human minds cannot phantom it. When you allow human knowledge, human mind to control you with the things of God, you are contradicting, you are contradicting yourself with the things of God. Because human mind cannot understand God. It takes a mind of spirit to worship, to understand, to have the knowledge, to have God residence be welcome in your innermost. It takes the mind of spirit, not the mind of flesh. Because to be carnally minded, which is flesh, it's death. 
is dead. To be spiritual minded, which is renewal of mind, is life, which is found through obedience. Which is found through what obedience. So our temple is, is meant to bear the fruit. Our temple is meant to bear the fruit. But this temple, it was in us, it was given to us by God Almighty. And now we are to look after that temple in the manner and the way by which you ought to be, so that his presence can come in and take residence in our heart. So that his presence can take dominion in our heart, in our life, so that his presence can reign in us. Let's 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 quickly uh, go to where we are, uh, where we were touched yesterday. I believe it's uh, Psalm one thirty two. Psalm one thirty two. I will dear blessed saint. Psalm 132. All right. Um, let me start from. Let me start from this. Uh, let me start from this now. Okay. Before. Before we do that tonight, we just. Okay. Psalm 132. Now, this was a, a, a psalm written by David. Uh, remember David? David was described as a man after God's old heart. I mean, God said to Samuel, now get up. Stop weeping. Stop mourning over Saul. Over whom I've disregarded. Over whom I do not have any feeling towards of. It's actually painful for someone because he understood what that means. The pain that someone was having for, for Saul was because his, the presence of God was no longer with Saul. So Saul had not yet understood the, the grievous offense he had committed before God Almighty. The act of disobedience, God disliked disobedience. It is it is profitable for a uh, to a person. It is profitable to a person who serve God in humility and obedience. It is what profitable. Many it it brings value to your life when you learn to be obedient to the way and to the things of God. So find it so hard, so difficult. Because someone understood what it means, just as Moses understood what it means to have the presence of God. Moses, before ever he goes on the missionary work, before he goes to go and meet with with Mo, uh, with, uh, with Pharaoh, Moses will pray and ask for God's presence to accompany him, even though he was with God. For days, for weeks, for months, he still asked for the presence of God because he understood what it means to have God's presence. You know, when you have the presence of God, Second Corinthians chapter three says, "Being in His presence means you are already liberated. You are what set free. Meaning you have received freedom. Meaning you have been set apart. Meaning you have received freedom. Meaning you are liberated. Liberated from everything that is not in your right standing with God. Liberated with every evil deed, every evil weapon." Every evil for righteousness, you already liberated. So you can walk in the midst of evil gang up, evil meeting. You can walk there. The moment you come there, you come with the presence of God. They immediately bow, bow to you. That's why every knee is bow because you carry that name. That name is in is, is in you, is on you, is within you. So the presence of that name, when you whenever you enter into evil gathering, evil gathering ceases. So any evil operation ceases because now there's a presence that has come. A presence has come. Now, when Jesus' presence arose, the two demons possessed from far, they could sense the presence of, of, of Jesus Christ. They began to say, now we know, we know who you are from far. Jesus was not even close to them. 
from far they could see the prince of far and they began to say have you come to torment us all the world son of god have you come to torment us son of god have you come to torment us son of god this was what they were saying have you come to torment us son of god because they knew that he carried the prince of god they knew now they began to ask now demon was not trying to seek their way for them not to be tormented anymore they are trying now to seek a way out seeking for freedom seeking for freedom pleading with our master jesus christ not to not to send them back from where they came from rather they should be sent into the into the into the uh, the, the floods of pigs that demon was pleading demon was manifesting pleading pleading not to be sent back to the pit of hell that's how that's how 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 gracious how glory how, how glorious it is when someone walks with the prince of god and god wants his presence to fill our hearts to fill our life so that our temple carry that freedom so whenever we go wherever we find ourselves we are with him so the word Emmanuel is for those who carry his presence because when 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 you create someone Emmanuel such a person is supposed to receive a reaction a reaction of freedom when Mary greeted uh the uh the uh, uh um the mother of John the Baptist when Mary greeted what, what is her name is it Elizabeth when Mary greeted Elizabeth thank you when Mary greeted Elizabeth, immediately John the Baptist, John the Baptist, who was yet unborn, was in the womb. He leaped. That Elizabeth felt a kick. Why? There's a presence in Mary. There's a presence in Mary, which came by the word. And because she believed and she received. Remember Luke 2. It says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, which means Emmanuel. The Lord is with you. He said, blessed are you. Now, if God is with you, you're already blessed. And whoever that you have an encounter with, that person also will share from that blessing. That's how, how powerful, that's how gracious it is for one to remain in the presence of God. Now, Psalm 132. Let me, let me start from verse 8. It said, Okay, let me start from this. Uh, on your own, you can start from uh, verse 1. Okay, yeah, because of... All right, let me start from verse 1. Sorry. Lord, earnestly remember to David credit all his humiliation and hardship and endurance. How he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. Surely I will not enter my dwelling house or get into my bed. I will not permit my eyes to sleep or my eyelids to slumber. Until I have found a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, at Ephraim, we first heard of the discovered heart. We found it in the field, in the fields of the wood, at Keras Jerim. Let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. So let us go into his tabernacle. Underline that word. Let us go into his tabernacle. Where is the tabernacle of God? Okay, just underline that word. He said, let us worship at his footstool. Okay? Remember, uh, Martha uh, and Mary, two sisters, two sisters of Lazarus, who, who after Jesus Christ, has, has uh, brought Lazarus back to death. Okay? Mary went to the feet went to the feet of the Roman star to worship. Martha did not understand. Martha was pleading with Jesus to tell the sister to help her in the kitchen so that they can serve the men who are hungry, who are in need of food to eat. You know, when you know when there's a funeral, okay? Obviously, when you go for a funeral, even though someone died, even though someone, even though there's a mourning in their family, even though their families gathered together crying, there's still, there's still uh, a place called kitchen. In that kitchen, there are dumplings, there are uh, nyamas, there are rice, there are dijo, there are uh, stew, there are curries, you know, there are drinks. Even some goes up, go, some even go as far as even buying alcohol 
in the name of somebody that died, you know, you are mourning, but still people come and marry, people come and drink. You know, church was the, the we just I'm, I'm trying to bring you to what was happening back then when Lazarus, when they thought Lazarus was dead, you know, so they were in mourning. So food was reserved to people who come as guests. So Mary, sister to Martha, choose the best place. She went into, into the tabernacle of the father, having seen what the master did. Because the master said, if you believe in me, you will see the glory. And the glory they saw. He said, your brother is not dead. He's merely sleeping. So now, now, let, let me wake him up from sleep so that you will know that I am the life. I am the dead. So no one can take without my permission. That's Jesus. Now, Lazarus, come from Death must have death might have happened, but now the resurrection, <laughs> the one that has old, the one that put death to to under our feet has come. So if you believe, if you believe, you will see the glory. So the glory was seen. So Mary saw the glory, and Mary refused to be separated from that glory. Instead of her to be in the kitchen helping out with the sister Martha. She chose the best place to worship. A woman that understood what it means to serve in the tabernacle. The best place to serve. Meaning, she go, she willingly give herself wholeheartedly to the things of God. No, this is where we talk about submission in a woman. You see, when you submit to the things of God, your will, your will, your own personal will has no reference now. Everything that you do will be of the Father because of the Father. It will be all about the Father because of the Father. So the ability of the Father is in you. So people may call you names. People may call, you see, the, the, the sister was kind of like, what is she doing? What, why, why is she Why is she doing that there? What is she doing there? What is she doing to herself there? What, what, what is she doing? Why can't she come and help? And Jesus told the sister, your sister has chosen the best place to bear witness, the best place to worship. The sister has chosen the best place. Now, Samus was saying in the book of Psalm 132, verse 7, said, let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, your resting place. You and the ark, the symbol of your strength, the ark was the symbol of his strength. That was then before. Okay, now, let, let your priest be clothed with righteousness, right living, and right standing with God. That is meaning of righteousness. Righteousness means right standing with God Almighty. And before you can stand with God Almighty, you have to be righteous. So because righteousness pleases God. Now, what doesn't please God? What is it that does not please God? Or righteousness. Our righteousness does not please God. Only righteousness pleases God Almighty. Now, <clears throat> verse 10. He said, For your servants, they will say, Turn not, turn not away the face of your of your anointed, and reject not your own king. The Lord swore to David in truth, he will not turn back from it. One of the fruits of your body, one of the fruits of your body. I will set upon your throne. I will set upon your throne. Meaning, the, the descendant of David will be made a king. The descendant of David. I got, you get to now understand, if you, if you go to the book of uh, Matthew 1, you read now the origin, the origin of, 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 of the birth of our master Jesus Christ. You can see now that the origin came from David. The lineage, his family lineage, Joseph, Jesse, uh, uh, Solomon, all these people, Boaz, all these people, they, 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 they come from the, the lineage of David. That's why some, some call him son of David. But David, that they call him, uh, David, as they refer to him, David himself calls him Lord. So you get to understand this, this message right now. Huh? You get to understand this message. And I believe that God will give us wisdom. God will, grant, God, uh, God will open heart for many to receive uh, the meaning of this now. Now, Psalm 132. Verse 12, if your children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, if 
your children will keep my covenant. Remember, I said, I will set upon your throne a fruit from your loin, meaning a descendant. Now, God has called us. Now, through the Son, Jesus Christ, we receive the message, the way, the teaching, the way to God, the way of God, how we must conduct ourselves, how we must be presentable, how we must look, how we must speak, how we must talk, how we must relate. The Bible says, don't be quick to anger. The Bible says, don't be quick to speak. It says, be a good listener. It says, pay attention to the word. The Bible says, let the word of the Lord not depart from your lips because you need the word of the Lord to survive each day. You need the word of God to overthrow each evil evil activities of each day. So each day present itself. Evil are presenting itself on, their, on our daily lives. Evil presents itself daily. But how do you overcome evil works? How do you overcome evil deeds? How do you triumph over evil, evil darkness? Now, Colossians 1 made us to understand that he has delivered us from evil dominion, from evil reign. That is the book of Colossians chapter 1, from verse 13, 14. It says, he has delivered us from evil reign, from evil dominion. So there's a message there. There's a teaching there. There's a message and teaching that is given. He says, if one can understand, say, if, if, if your children will keep my covenant, if your children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach, who delivered us? The Son. God delivered us through the Son. God delivered us through His Son because the Spirit of God is what to testify. The Spirit of God is what to brought, bring testimony. He says, if your children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children also shall, shall sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. Now, let's, let's rewind back a bit. He has desired it for his habitation. Now, 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 let's quickly go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah quickly. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, he says now, thus says the Lord, thus says, thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of a house would you build for me? What kind can be my resting place? What kind can be my resting place? What kind can be my resting place? He says, for all these things, my hands are made. And so all these things have come into being by and for me, says the Lord. But this is the man to whom I will look and have regard. This is the kind of house that I will call my resting place. This is the kind of heart. This is the kind of structure. This is the kind of being. This is the kind of man, this is the kind of woman that I will call my resting place. He says, this is, the, this is the man to whom I will look and have regard. He who is humble and of a broken or wounded spirit and who trembles at my word and reverse, uh, reverse my command. Meaning, one who holds, one who reverts to the command of the Father, one who fears the Lord. One who honors the Lord, one who understands that even though evil was done or lies was perpetrated against you, even though you are Adam by, even though you are lied, you are they, they used lied against you. They were you were you were lied to. They 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 they, they, they try to ridicule your name. They try to do all kind of things against you, but you chose not to have or behave in the in the like manner. You chose to have fear of God. You chose to honor God. You chose to have the fear of God in your heart. You chose to allow the, the will of God to happen. Just as our master Jesus Christ did. Now, what you are doing, you are allowing yourself to be a son of God. Because if one is not 
if one is not in the sun, if one is not in the sun, there's no way one can welcome the dwelling of God in him. When Jesus spoke in John 14 that a time is coming when true worshippers, true worshippers are called sons of God. True worshippers are what? They are called sons of God. They are the ones who qualify to, in, to speak of the inheritance of the Father. That's what the book of John 1 says. To as many who receive him, who believed him, so as men will receive, they will believe him. They've been given the right. They've been given the privilege to be called sons of God. Because only for one to be in spirit, if you if you understand what it means to be in the spirit, now you understand what it means to communicate the language of God. Because God is spirit. <laughs> That's when you understand to communicate his language. That's when you understand to communicate his will. That's when you understand to communicate his word. That's when you understand to communicate his action. Now, now, it says, for verse 2, it says, For all these things my hand has made, and so all these things have come into being, by and for me, says the Lord. But this is the man to whom I will look and have regard, he who is humble and of a broken or wounded spirit, and who trembles at my word and reverses my command. Now, listen, remember that David was asking a request. And God says, your descendant, meaning the fruit of your loin. Now, who was the fruit of his loin? And who did God uh, listen when he prayed to God? Now, open the book of Acts 7. Open Acts 7 quickly. Acts chapter 7. How are we there? Acts chapter 7. Let me start from verse. Uh, let me start from verse 44. It says, Acts 7 from verse 44. Our forefathers had the tents, tabernacle of witness, in the wilderness, even as he who directed Moses to make it had ordered according to the pattern and model he had seen. Verse 45. Our forefathers in turn brought it, this tent of witness in with them into the land with Joshua when they dispossessed the nation which God drove out before the face of our forefathers. So it remained here until the time of David. Verse 46. Who found grace, favor, and spiritual blessing in the sight of God? Now he's speaking about David now. Who found what? Favor, spiritual blessing. Spiritual blessing in the sight of God and prayed and prayed that he might be allowed to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. Remember, when God instructed Samuel that, it, that he has found himself a king. Now, the favor of God was upon David. David was in the flock, on the field, minding the sheep of his father. He was the least among his brothers. Meaning he was the most little one. People never, they don't even, they don't count him as, as, as one of Jesse's son. They don't count him as one of, because it's not, it's not his position. Apart from him being the least, he does not, he does not possess what it means, what it, what it means to be a man. He had, he had, he, he did not have it. <clears throat> because when someone arrived, Someone look at the structure of the man, the beauty of the man that he saw there. And he said, surely, surely the Lord God Almighty is with you. He, he did that numerous, multiple times. And, and God said to him, it is not the way you see. It's not what you think. Because your way are not my way. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. The least, the least, the least, the least, the least, the least are the humble. You may be the richest, but humble yourself. You may be the boss, but humble yourself. You may be the best at things, but learn to humble yourself. Learn to hold yourself. Do not, do not allow your position to overwhelm. Do not allow your position to control you. Do not be the one who causes people to fear you. Because you have good relationship with people. The moment the moment a uh, uh, um, position comes to your hand, you turn, you turn or the other way. You become a person that people cannot recognize any longer. But you were such a loving and caring and adorable person. Now, what changes you? The position that you just acquired. 
Don't forget that position comes and position goes. Position comes and it goes. Now, what about what about the relationship that you, you cost in the in the process of acquiring this position? Can you mend the broken relationship? Now, if you are to remain humble and refuse any materialistic thing or position to change you, you remain a son, a son of God. Listen, the moment Judas, Judas Iscariot, the betrayer of our master Jesus Christ, the moment it was opened on, the moment it was opened on to what he could acquire, reach his wealth, his mind now begin begin now to to play to play on him because he welcomes it. He welcomed. He was revealed to it and he welcomed it. He saw the prostitute woman came and used the most expensive perfume on the feet of our master. He saw that and immediately he knew the amount that perfume was. He knew the worth of that perfume. He knew the worth of that perfume. But the question was, does he know the worth of our master Jesus Christ? No, he did not. Because he valued material things over the spirit, over the spiritual things. That's where he got mm -hmm. it wrong. Now, now his mind now begins, his mind now begins to play on him all the more. Now he was the one now who went to the to the opposition, to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, and asked them, How much are you willing to pay so that I can betray him for you? Do you see now? His mind conceived that evil. That's why we say, guide your mind. Be alert at all times. Guide your mind. Never welcome anything that is not in, in right standing with God Almighty. Never allow anything that is not in accordance with the will of God. Never welcome anything that does not speak good of the things of God. Never entertain evil things. Never entertain evil opinion. Never entertain evil gathering. Never entertain evil gossip. Never entertain anything that does not serve the purpose of God. Lest your mind do not be tempted towards such things. Lest your mind do not be tempted and be open. So what such things so that your eyes and your mind will remain fixated on the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to our master. Now listen. Verse 46, Acts chapter 7. It says, Who found grace, favor, and spiritual blessing in the sight of God? And pray that he might be allowed to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. Verse 347. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High does not dwell in the house and temples made with hand, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my, the footstool for my feet. What kind of a house can you build for me? House that the Lord or what is the place in which I can rest, in which I can rest, okay? Now, was it not my hand that made all these things? You stubborn and still naked people, still hating and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You are always actively resisting. You are always what? Always actively resisting the Holy Spirit. So how do we resist the Holy Spirit? What may I ask? How do we say no to the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. And when do we resist the Holy Spirit? Did the Holy Spirit come and knock at our door to say, I have come mm -hmm. to be with you? Does the Holy Spirit come and, and present himself? Maybe when we are walking or maybe when we are driving or maybe when we are eating. Does the Holy Spirit come and present himself to show to us that he has come and we resist him? And we are resisting his, his will and we are resisting his command. Listen to what the message says in Psalm 132. He said, if your if your children will listen and obey, listen to the message, obey the message. Now, who brought the message unto us? God gave us the message by who? By the Son Jesus Christ. He gave us the message by the Son Jesus Christ. And when and how did he give us the message? When and how did he give us the message? Luke chapter 4, Jesus Christ says something in Luke 4 verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Father is upon me. He has set me apart, which is what happened 
when one is in him, he has set me apart. He has anointed me, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, with the message to deliver the oppressed, to bring the message, the good news unto all. So anyone who received this good message, and the message was, was, was it began with teachings and command. It taught about the Father. It said, it said I'm, a, I'm about the will of my Father. Whoever has seen me, I've seen the Father. I'm about the will of my Father. So if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, the Father is about love. He said, I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. Now, the Father is about love. And Jesus says this. The greatest command, the first and the greatest command that I give, John 13, the first and greatest command, say, love thy neighbor. Love those who persecute you. It, it is so lovely how you hear that Jesus Christ commanded you to love those who hate you. And some people find it difficult to reciprocate such love. When you begin to understand, ah, this person that, that did this to me, how can I love this person? When you begin to ask yourself, this person that hurt me so much, this person that did this to me, how can I find it in my heart to forgive this person? How can I find it in my heart to love this person? How can I find it in my heart to be able to bring myself together in, in caring for this person? Now, listen. All this question that you that you just asked or that you just said, it is because you are not yet a son of God or you have not received the spirit of sonship. Because now, if the, if the father forgives, so also the son. If the father forgives, so also the son. Because the spirit of the father is in the son. He says it pleases the father to allow his fullness to dwell in the son. Because there is a testimony. The Holy Spirit will testify about this, about the sonship. The sonship. The Holy Spirit will testify about the sonship. That's why the the and Jesus Christ never in any way retali retaliates to those who mocked at him in Luke 24. They mocked at him. He never retaliated. He had a, he had he had every reason to retaliate. He had every reason to answer them. He had every reason to say to them, How come you do not you are you've not seen? Are you that blind that you cannot see that I'm in this position because of you? You have every every reason to answer him. He had every reason to answer his opposition. He did not have time to entertain their evil evil hearts. Rather, he brings the word of the father to confront them. He, you say uh, uh, it is it is sin, it is not by law to heal. On, on, on the on the seventh day is a Sabbath day. You're not supposed to know it's perfection. It's a day of perfection. It's a day of perfection. When, when perfection comes, imperfection departs. He brought the world to confront their thoughts, to confront their heart. Even in most in most cases, you, before they speak, why they are busy whispering, he knows what is in their heart. He speaks what is in their heart. Now, when 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 he asked them, this was what they were, this, this was what they were whispering, meaning this was in their heart, they refused to speak it loud. Now he said to them, If you are saying that I'm casting demon out, can a devil cast out devil? <laughs> Can a demon possess, cast out a demon possess? If you say he's a, he's a son of devil, can devil cast out devil? Surely no. Is it possible? Devil cannot cast out devil. So why do you assume that in your heart? Why do you conceive that in your heart? Why are you sharing that evil thought, evil desires? Which you know in this world that we are living, it is easy for a heart, for a mind to get contaminated. People get contaminated that easily. People, people lost their, their presence and get contaminated with things. Because you, you, you hear something, you, you, you were not even, you did not even hear from the Holy Spirit. But you hear and you believe it. Did you take what that, did you take that news and you go and pray for discernment, for understanding? No, you did not. Because if you do, you will not be quick to pass judgment. You will allow the Spirit of God to come into your heart and you will come with the opinion, which is now the right opinion. But because you did not allow that, you've allowed yourself to be misguided and to be misled. Now, when you are doing that, you are simply allowing the enemy to come and do as he wishes, as he pleases. 
You are simply allowing the enemy to come and steal, to come and kill, to come and destroy. When you are allowing, you are allowing room for the enemy to come into your life. Because the enemy only comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So, where is the resting place? Where is the tabernacle? And who qualified? Who qualified? Who qualified to be called uh, a, a resting place? When we often uh, say this about you, that when, when we pray together, we usually say this to you, that thank you for allowing yourself to be a vessel unto honor because you have allowed the Spirit of God to rest within you. Not because you are praying, not because you are praying for us, not because you are praying together, because it has not become your habits, your lifestyle. It does not become your dwelling, your dwelling. So you are now, you are you are known to be a, a, a dwelling place for the Spirit of the Father to rest abundantly. And your utterances, your character, your, 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 your way of conduct, the manner by which your character is seen, it can all it can it can also uh, uh, speak of who you are, meaning your personality. Now let's quickly finish here. Acts chapter seven. He says now, verse 46, who found grace and favor and spiritual blessing in the sight of God? Who found grace, favor, spiritual blessing in the sight of God and prayed that he might be allowed to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob? For the God of Jacob. He says, who find grace, favor, spiritual blessing in the sight of God. Who, 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 who has honored God with his or character? Yes, by grace. Ephesians 2 says, by grace you were saved. Now, Titus 2 verse 11 says, grace has appeared before all men. So grace has appeared. The grace that still was made an appearance. Now, who qualified to pass God? Who qualified? Now let's let's go back to uh, uh, Psalm one thirty two quickly. Psalm one thirty two quickly. Who qualified? Psalm one thirty two. Verse twelve. Verse eleven. Eh? <laughs> the Lord swore to David in truth; he will not turn back from it. So, what the Lord said to David, it was it was in truth, and the Lord God Almighty just would not turn back. That's why we said Numbers in three verse nineteen always refer to us about God's personality. Why he is not a man? He is not a man that he should lie. If God has said something concerning your life, God will make it happen, as God has said. If God has mentioned something concerning your life, if God has said something concerning your life, God will make it happen. He make it a way. You don't need to depend on people. You don't need to depend on a man. You don't need to depend on him. God will make a way. So depend on him. How you will do it is for you to keep depending on him. How you will do it is, is for you to keep seeing that he has done it. There's, there's something. If you can learn to see what God has done, even though you have not, even though you, you are yet to see it, Jesus Christ teaches us something in the book of Matthew 5. He said, Blessed are you who believe, even though you have not seen. Blessed are those who believe, even though you have not seen. Because you trust in God. So you don't even need to see. Because you trust in what God is doing. Because you trust in the work of God. Because you trust in the deed of God. Because you, because you trust in Him. Now, verse, verse 12, it says, If your children will keep my covenant, my testimony, that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon your throne. Now, who qualify? We are a choosing generation. A choosing call to his excellency. First Peter 2, verse 9, says, We are a chosen generation. Chosen generation. Chosen generation. Chosen generation. Now, 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 listen. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. Now, Galatians 5 says, live habitually by the Spirit. So, how do I know that God chose me? No, I, where, where is it written that God chose me? 
he, he has appointed me. I heard he has appointed me. I heard, I heard that he, he, he has called, he has come, he has called for me out of darkness. He has brought me into the light. So where is the evidence? Where is the evidence of this light that called us? Do you believe the words that you receive? The first thing you have to ask yourself, do you believe that you are called forth out of darkness into the light? Do you believe it? Because without you believing, you will not experience the manifestation. You will not experience the manifestation without you believing it. Now, how did how did Apostle Paul and the disciples, how did they knew that they were they were called out of darkness into the kingdom of light. You see, when 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 uh, uh, Peter, when Peter in the book of Acts two, Acts three, okay, on your own read Acts two, Acts three, when him and the disciples were going about and they were preaching, and they go to this the, to the synagogue outside the synagogue. Now a layman who was listening to them. But his own need was to was to beg for money to eat, money to feed, money to shelter himself, money to pay for himself. That was what all he needed. Not the teaching that that uh, uh, Peter, John, and the disciples were teaching at the beautiful gate. So the man reached out to them. The man reached out to them, begging for hands. Now Peter looked. Peter and John looked at him, and Peter said, "Okay, you needed something." So what we are teaching here has not yet penetrated. Now look at us. Let us give you now what we have. Because if the silver that you are in need of, the gold that you are searching for, we never have that. But what we do have is mightier, greater than silver and gold put together. So if that message was also being communed to all the pastors and all those who are busy standing. Because that event took place where there are a lot of people. It was called Beautiful Gate. There were a lot of people, people going in, people coming out, people observing. So they were preaching before the laymen came to them. So God now used that laymen to make their mind, to, to be focused on the teaching, on the word, on the name, what Peter and John and others were speaking. Now, Peter and John said to him, look deep into us. Look into us. Look into our eyes. Let our eyes, let our eyes be be be, uh, be vested on your eyes. Look into our eyes and listen to what we are saying. We do not have money. We don't give money because we do not have money. We don't have gold because we do not give gold. We don't have silver. But what we have is greater, mightier than silver and gold combined together. It's the name of our master, Jesus Christ. Now rise up from where circumstances has kept you. Rise up from where that lame has kept you and walk. And the man just stood up and walked. Now, that was when now the whole attention of the people who heard them speaking before not paying attention. Their attention was not coming now. Now they began to say, who, who are these people now? Now we, we knew them. They were with him. They were with the one who we killed. They, they were with him. They were with him. Look, but we knew these guys. We know them. They were uneducated. They were all educated. They had no theologies. They have no uh, 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 um, no school. Uh, uh, they have no school education. But look at the manner by which they speak. They speak with such authority. They spoke with such authority. Now they were now asking themselves, how come they they are behaving like like the master, like the master Jesus Christ? How come they are behaving like the master Jesus Christ now? Because you see, the spirit of the son causes adoption. Romans says it, we are adopted into sonship. So Jesus Christ never leaves. Jesus Christ never departs. He remains and he lives forevermore. He remains and he lives forevermore. So he makes our heart his dwelling place. He makes what our heart is dwelling place, a place of residence. Now, if one keeps on obeying his word, John 14, he says, there's a reward that will come to you. And that reward is this. He says, I am a father. We come and make your heart our residence. Our residence. So your heart now becomes a place of tabernacle. Your heart now becomes a place of tabernacle. Where when you pray, you are praying an answered prayer. 
You are praying with an answer prayer. Get to understand until when you receive the spirit of song, then you know that your prayer is not in vain. Many have been praying for years, for months, for weeks, but they don't see the effect nor the result of that prayer. It's because you are not praying from the right from the right uh, from the right standing. You are not praying for God from the right standing. Listen, praying in the right standing is praying a righteous prayer. A righteous prayer is one who prays the standing with God Almighty. Because as you are praying, God immediately perform. As you are praying, God immediately perform. Because why? You are in, in right standing with God Almighty. When God asks of Jeremiah, what is it that you see? God was standing with Jeremiah when God asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what is it that you see? Jeremiah said, I can see this happening. An almond leaf branch. Blossoming, and God said to Jeremiah, You have seen well that I will watch to see that I perform my word. So, until one has received the spirit of God through the thought, every utterance, every declaration, every prayer, every ministration, every preaching, every teaching carry the presence of God, which God Almighty will bring into performances. So God will bring it into performance by affecting every utterance that one speaks. Now, let's finish here. Psalm 132. So for the Lord has chosen, verse 13, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. He has desired it. God has desired your heart. That's why you will keep on bearing fruit that has from above. Fruit that cannot decompose. Fruit that does not decay. Fruit that does not rot. That is the fruit that you continue to bear. So in all of your life, there, there is no shortage of joy in all of your life. There is no shortage of happiness in all of your all your, all of your life. There is no shortage of peace. Yes, you, you don't come and say, "Hey, <laughs> today is rough, man. Get rough, man. Get rough. Hey, there's no peace. Today is rough. There is no comfort. Today is rough. There is there's, there is no love. Today is rough. There is no happiness. No, listen. With God, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible with God. All things are possible. When you are in him, everything is possible. It's not just an occasional thing. You don't experience occasional joy. You don't experience occasional peace. With God, what, what God has given, what God has placed is, is, is everlasting. It is forevermore. It will serve the purpose of God for your life. It will serve his purpose for your life. Now, verse, verse 14 of Psalm 122. He says, this is my resting place forever, says the Lord. Yeah, I will dwell, for I have desired it. Because one, you keep to his command. You reverence his teaching. You honor his word. You honor his presence. You do not go astray from his teaching. You allow his message to rule your mind, to rule your heart. And you walk on his word. You allow his word to dictate on, onto you, not, not you be merely controlled by emotions. Now he says, he says now, this is John 14. In other words, also is in John 14, when you take John 14. Now he says, I will surely, uh, 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 verse 14, Psalm 132, this is my resting place forever, says the Lord. Yeah, I will dwell for I have desired it. I will surely and abundantly bless our provision. I will satisfy our poor with bread. Our priest will also with eye clothed with salvation, and our saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make a arm spring forth and bear and bought for David. I have ordained and prepared a lamp for my anointed. Now listen to this. I have ordained and prepared a lamp for my anointed. I have what? I have ordained and prepared a lamp for my, for my anointed. Now, let's just put our finger there. Put our finger there. Run to Ephesians 1. We are, wrap, we are about to wrap up now. Ephesians 1. Now, Ephesians 1. Listen. And because of time, I'm going to start from verse 2. It says, May grace. Grace means God's unmerited favor. And spiritual peace, which means peace with God and harmony, unity, and undisturbance be yours from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. May blessing, praise, laudation, eulogy be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ 
who has blessed us in Christ, spiritual blessing, the first place a person must prosper in the Son, the Christ. That's the first place one must what, prosper. So if you have not yet received the Spirit of the Son, you know, listen, you've not received the spiritual blessing. And if you've not received the spiritual blessing, meaning your physicality, your physicality, your physical life, your physical existence will not be prospering as it should be. Now, some will say, but I know a lot of people who are, who are not born again, who did not receive Christ, but they are prospering. No, it's a prospering with condition, with time frame. Listen, listen to this. Mark, mark our word. It's a, it's a prosperous, a prosperous that is of time frame, okay? And it's a, it's a prosperous that is conditioned. Condition that has to be renewed. That TNC, you know TNC? He, he, I mean, it's a physical thing, you understand? TNC, it has to be renewed. TNC has to be renewed. What with Christ is an unconditional. You don't need to. You don't need to wait when your license disc has expired. You have to go and renew your last license disc. There is no such thing in Christ. With Him is an unconditional love. The love that is not biased. The love that is not is it, it, is not for self. The love that you, you cannot attain by trying to at least human minds. No. The love of God is an unbiased, unconditional. Pure, all, 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 idolated love. The love that God has towards us is the same manner, the same way we ought to have love towards others. This is the greatest command. Now listen. Ephesians 1, verse 3. May blessing, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual giving by the Holy Spirit, blessing in the heavenly realm? Verse 4. Even as in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own. I have chosen Zion. Who are the Zion? I have chosen Zion. I have chosen them as my tabernacle, as my place of Christ. Now, listen. Even as in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself, has his own in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Listen to that. That we should be holy. That we should be a holy person. It's not one who is any smart in anger. A holy person. Hey, some people like to say holy anger, holy anger. Hey, hey, come on, come on. Get angry at sin. Get angry at sin. Not at sinners. Get angry at sin. So holy anger doesn't mean that you should, you should, you should, uh, uh, um, you know, the holy anger doesn't mean that you should, you should send someone to be prosecuted when you have, when you have a means of showing mercy to that person. Holy anger doesn't mean you should begrudge someone because the person did you wrong. Holy anger doesn't mean you should, you should not forgive someone or not forgive because the person stole from you or because the person took something from you, then you refuse not to forgive that person. That's not only anger. That is you resorting to unforgiveness. Unforgiveness serves as hatred. Hatred begets spirit of hate. Spirit of hate has a way of coming into people's mind, causing that person to become. Now you are wearing hatred. Your mind, everything, you are hating everything. Even though you've not seen anyone, even though you've not been with people, even though you've not known anyone, because you've world hate in your spirit, you've attached your spirit to that hatred. You begin to hate anything and everyone. You hate the environment. You hate the people. Even where you are being taken to, you hate the place. Even you, even not knowing anyone, you just hate. I, you, you begin to even say, I hate this place. I hate this community. I hate this. No, no. You are resorting yourself and you are attaching yourself to that spirit. Okay. Now, verse 4, Ephesians 1. Even as in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself, as for his own, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be only consecrated and set apart for him, and blameless in the sight, 
blameless in his sight, even before reproach, before him in love. Now, verse 5. For he ordained us, destining us, listen to that, for he ordained us, destining us, plan in love for us to be adopted. For he ordained us, destining us, plan in love. So when, when, some of us say, when we say that God has us in mind, when he said to Moses, I'm about to destroy this this rebellious generation, this rebellious generation, this Israel, I'm about to destroy them. I said, I'm about to destroy them. Do you know that Moses pleaded, Numbers 15 says, Moses did pleaded, Moses intervened, Moses interceded. Moses said, you are God. These are your people. You are the one who brought them out from the land of Pharaoh. Now Moses, God said to Moses, "You have, you know me well, you know me well. But for I will, I will see. For as long as I, the Lord, live, I will see that my glory fill the whole earth." So their rebellious nature stood against them from revealing God's glory. But but God's own generation carry God's own glory, and this generation, God planned it, God ordained it, God destined. God caused them to be adopted into Son and the Son. Meaning, we came on this, we came in this generation, but now we are planned in the Son, in the Son. So when God said that we, uh, when God chose us before the foundation of this world, because we were planned in the Son, we were ordained in the Son. So because the Son was there before the creation, we were also there. We were there before creation. We were there before the existence of Adam. Yes, we were there. Yes, we were there. Before, before the creation of Adam, we were there. We were there. Now let's finish here. Verse 5, Ephesians 1, verse 5. For if ordained us, destined us, plan in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children, Reviewed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance. Now, listen to this in accordance with the purpose of his will. In accordance, meaning, meaning you see, now when you talk about terms and conditions, now listen, this is where, yes, God gives us freedom of choice to choose. We can rather work with God or work against God. In obedience, you are working with God. In disobedience, you are working against God. And disobedience, you know what it serves. You know what it brings forth. Uh, Romans 5. If you go read Romans 5, you, you understand the basis of disobedience and what it held and what you have done. And the rot that is still continue to do in many lives today. The basis of disobedience. For he said, because of one man disobedience, there's a, there was an entrance. Something gave entrance into this earth. Something came onto this earth, and that thing came to ruin life. That thing came to destroy that because of one man's disobedience. But because of one man's obedience, now life of abundance, life that you're not supposed to, not supposed to uh, 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 finish, life that does not finish, came onto man, meaning taking man into the original plan of God, original plan of God, God's own kind on this earth. As he is king in heaven, we are king on this earth. He ordained us, destiny us, plan in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with the purpose of his will, because it pleased him and was his kind intent. Was his kind intent. So it pleases the Father. And it was his kind of intent. Now, so that we might be the praise and the commendation of his glory, grace, favor, and mercy, which he also freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Mm -hmm. Say, in him, we have redemption, deliverance, and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of our offenses, shortcomings, and trespasses, in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious love. The generosity of his gracious love. Now, now let's let's finish up here. Let's finish up here. Let's finish up here. Uh, Psalms one thirty two. 
you are finishing now. Verse 15. He says, verse 14, this is my resting place forever, says the Lord. Yeah, I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will surely and abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests also will I clothe with salvation. And her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make a horn spring forth. But for David, I have ordained and prepared a lamb for my anointed, fulfilling the promises of the old. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. Upon himself shall his crown flourish. So now, you know what I said? You know what I said? Pray against your enemy. You know what I said? Pray against your enemy. God says, I will clothe them with shame. I will clothe them with shame. Now, we, 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 we always say this to people, right? And also, sometimes when I counsel people, I tell them, when they come with the pains in their hands, and they and they and, and you hear them saying that they want they want God to attend to this need. Some will say, "Listen, Apostle, I want you. I want I want this to happen to this person. I want this to happen to that person." And I'll look. Number one, I'm not a Sangoma. I'm not an Abadis. Number three, I'm not here for evil deeds. Yes, I, I understand the pains you are going through because it was caused by someone. Why don't you channel your energy in loving that person? Because love overcomes it. Love overcomes every evil pains. Love overcomes every evil desires. No, 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 no. Hey, I want this person to feel what I'm feeling. I want this person to be to be crushed. I want this thing to happen to this person. Listen, be careful of the of, of <laughs> be careful of the kind of prayer you're asking to be made. Because God says, Your vengeance are mine. Let's fear God. Let's honor God. Let's fear God and let's honor God. Let's allow Him to do because we are made in accordance with His will. So let's not go out of his way. So we are ordained. We are destiny. We were raised up, planned in love, in the Son, in accordance to his will. Now, the will of God remains. says, I have thought and plans for your life, not to prosper you, not, uh, not to harm you, pardon me, not to harm you, but to prosper you. He says, I have thought, I have plans for your life, not to harm you, but to prosper you. God wants your life to prosper. So who is that uncircumcised Philistines who stand as a human, who stand as an evil, trying to deter what God has planned for you? Sometimes God, the, the Spirit of God heals some certain things from, from, from chosen people because they are yet to be matured on how they will respond to it. Your response towards things, the way you respond against things, the way you respond over something, you often find yourself, you often see yourself hmm, being the one who is causing even trouble to yourself because you lack maturity on dealing with matters. That's what that's the, and sometimes God will tell some things. There are a lot of things that that uh, <laughs> the Spirit of God will tell from, from those they love. Because you will not yet be mature on how you will deal with it. Because God does not want to lose you. Why? God values you. So God will yield those things from you. And God will continue to guide you and protect you and shield you from even you knowing those things. Because if you know those things at the time that you are, you might, the, your respondent can even cost you your salvation. So today, we are declaring right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's just say, whatever you have there in your home, we declare to become the fruit. This is the fruit of the vine. <laughs> this is the fruit of our Lord that bears the character of our Master Jesus Christ. This is the fruit that has come to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I declare what you have in your home right now to become fruit of the Spirit as you partake from it. 
life-giving spirit comes upon your body. As you partake in whatever that you have on your table right now, we pray for over anything that is in your kitchen, in your cabinets, in your refrigerators, whatever you have in your pantry. We pray for whatsoever you have on your table right now to become fruit of the vine in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is life-giving spirit. As you partake from this right now, life comes upon you. As you partake upon this right now, your life refreshes. As you partake over upon this right now, the healing comes upon your body. Deliverance comes upon your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you will be partaking on this right now, your life receives redemption in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No evil sickness sees your life. No evil disease penetrates your body. No evil darkness come near your tent. No evil darkness come near your tabernacle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As this has been taken, as this has been to be partaken on right now, life from above comes over your life. Life from above comes upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare it is well with your health. It is well with your body. You are lifted up. You are made though. You are perfected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No evil darkness mm -hmm. penetrates you. No evil darkness come near your life. No evil darkness come near your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare perfection upon you. Perfection upon your life. We pray over everything in your kitchen right now. We pray for the water in your taps. Every water in your taps right now. We declare to become the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ, the blood of our master Jesus Christ is the prevailing blood. We overcome the enemy. We overcome the works of the enemy by the prevailing blood and by the word. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of our testimony right now. This is the word of our testimony right now. This is the word of our testimony right now. And the prevailing blood right now that is on your own, that is in your taps right now. As you drink right now, you speak, you, you, you drink from the from the tap of from, from the fountain of heaven. As you drink right now, you are drinking the permanent from above. As you drink right now, you are partaking from the blood of the new covenant, the prevailing blood, the blood of a better and a noble message in the mighty name of this Christ. This is now declared the fruit of the vine. In your homes, in your houses, in your kitchens, in your pantry, in your cupboard, in your fridge, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So take and partake. Take whatever. Take whatever. Take whatever. Whatever you want there. Take whatever you want there. And, and, and partake. Partake and eat like. So those who want to use that for Christ Jesus, this is me having something in my mouth and I, and I like to speak. Now, to those who want to give that for Christ Jesus, and if you have not, if you haven't, I believe this is an opportunity for you to do so. Uh, I believe this is an opportunity for you to see, grasp, grasp hold of this opportunity and make use of it. Run with it. God loves you. God loves you. God sent his holy begotten son, Jesus Christ, to give his life up for you so that you can come into the plan of God for your life. God wants your life to succeed. God wants your life to prosper. God wants you to live his kind of life on this earth. Only by in the son, if you are in the son, you are in God. So how can one receive the sun? How can one welcome the sun? It's not difficult. It's, it starts by you owning up to your deeds and confessing them before the Father. He is here. He is there. He is with us. He is listening. He is watching. Ah, but how can he watch? Does he have a phone? Does he have internet? Does he have satellite? All these things, he is the maker and the creator of all these things. Internet, satellites, tablets, phone, everything was a creation created by God. But today we see men, we see people taking uh, taking the credit. No, these things were there. They were there. They were there. If Moses <clears throat> wrote on the tablet of stone, the tablet that is in, in, in book today, that is in rain today, Moses wrote on it years ago, million years back, before now. So this is where there. So we are we are saying, do not let do not let yourself be talked out of the presence of the Father. That is important for one to be born again. Jesus says to Nicodemus. Except a person is born again, 
Nicodemus asked in my 70s, how am I to go back to my mother's room? How am I going to fit? No, it's not about going back to your mother's room, but it has to do with the renewal of mind. The renewal of mind. You see, when your mind is renewed in the word of God, your whole personality is being controlled by God's presence, by God's spirit. You will not be quick mm -hmm. to sin. You will not be quick to anger. You will not be quick to offense. Because you become a one who pays attention in listening. A one who is not moved by people's opinion. A one who is not moved by people's will. Except the will of God. So you want to give your life to Jesus Christ? Follow us in saying this prayer. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I read your word. I welcome your word in my heart. Your word is spirit. Life-giving spirit. Lord Jesus, I thank you for bringing the message of God into my life. I welcome this message. I receive it wholeheartedly. Father, I humble myself before your presence and I confess that I'm a sinner in need of your mercy, in need of your conviction, in need of your forgiveness. You went to the cross of Calvary for my sake and you resurrected on the third day to give, me, to give me life, the abundant life. Lord Jesus, wash me with your precious prevailing blood that I may be whiter than snow. Save my soul today. I believe in my heart and with my mouth I confess that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my Redeemer. You have now reconciled me back to God. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this grace that has appeared before me. I humbly request, Father, that my name may be written in the book of life where there is eternity and no condemnation. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm born anew right now. I am born again. The old is God and the new has come. I'm now a new creation. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are now a new creation. The old is God and everything about you has become a new. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, blessed saints. We declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May this week, may God's favor, unmerited favor of God, unmerited God's grace, something you didn't work hard for, something you didn't work hard for, may it locate your life this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the abundance locate your life this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the unfailing glory of the Father comes upon you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, bringing the abundance upon your life, bringing the abundance upon your dwelling. May your heart become becomes the dwelling, the residence dwelling of the Spirit of God in the mighty name of the Spirit. May your life begin to receive favor upon favor, grace upon grace in the mighty name of the Spirit. We bless the work of your hand in the mighty name of the Spirit. May multiplication comes upon every work of their hand in the mighty name of the Spirit. Whatever you are doing with your hand, we declare multiplication in the mighty name of the Spirit. Whatever you do with your hand, we declare multiplication in the mighty name of the Spirit. We pray over your businesses. We pray over your career. We pray over your education. We pray over your family. We pray over your loved ones. We pray over your marriage. We pray over your ministry in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare the favor of the Lord upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare that the word of God goes ahead of you to level mountain of human obstacles used against your life, against your career, against your finances, against your home, against your marriage. The word of, the word of God has gone ahead of you to strengthen every crooked pathway, to uproot iron bars set against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No evil shall come near your life. No evil shall come near your tent. No evil shall seize your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is the way the Lord God Almighty has made for you. This week, you are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will receive and see the unexpected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. It is well with your life. It is well with your home. You have been restored. You have been made. You have been perfected in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to our master. Glory to our Savior. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, saints. Thank you, uh, all, everyone. Thank you so much. We are blessed together. Uh, continue to partake. Continue to partake and check yourself. Check your body. Check your health. 
check what the Lord God Almighty has done for you. It is over. If you are having any kind of pain before, eat. That pain will leave. And that pain will never come back anymore. If you are experiencing any kind of suffering on your, any part of your body, eat. That suffering will leave you. And it will not come back to your body anymore. Eat the goodness of God. Eat the mercy of God. Eat the favor of the Lord. Partake in the healing, partake in the deliverance, for he loves you dearly. You are loved, you are blessed, you are saved, you are lifted up, you are, you are made, you are made to reveal the unfailing glory. Yes, the unfailing glory is with you all the days of your life. God loves you, God is with you. For most, it is to God be the glory, blessed saint. As you know, Rabboni Center Ministries is live, so we are going straight to Rabboni Center Ministries. Uh, we meet again uh, shortly. Uh, for prayers, and we are saying thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, men and women of God. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, that uh, you've given your life to Christ. We we call you brothers because we are from one. You see, our identity is not known by our names. Our identity is not known by the by the color of our skin or by our ethnicity or by the origin of where we 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 are, where we were or where we come from. Listen, our origin. Is from Christ Jesus. And this is how we begin to know. When we show love to one another, when we show love to people, this is how the whole world will come to know us. How the whole world will know us is by showing love to one another. So as one has given his or life to Christ, we can call you our brother. We now call you our sister. For we are one in Christ. So God loves you. God is with you. Remain blessed and remain blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the like. Thank you for the comment. If there are prayer requests, please do send to us. We are here to attend to prayer requests. Uh, thank you so much. We love you. We love you greatly. We love you dearly. May the Lord God Almighty blesses you all the more. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let's come and partake here.